Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Star Stargate franchise sci-fi series called Classics uh, Documentary. I'm delighted to, today to be joined by the one and only Steve Mackay, who played the role of Colonel Robert Makepeace in Stargate SG-1, appearing for five episodes between 1997 and uh, 2000. I suppose, um, Robert, 2000 to 2020, that's 20 years ago. Does it almost feel like a, a lifetime, a different sort of uh, generation that you were on walking in the cast of SG-1, uh, walking uh, play opposite of uh, Robert Dean Anderson, uh, opposite Don Davis, opposite big characters of that sort of nature? Do you have to sort of scratch yourself sometimes and say, did that actually happen? Uh, yeah, thinking back to those days, um fondly, uh, they were uh, momentous for me uh, at that time of my acting career. Uh, and walking onto the Stargate set, which is actually not even a kilometer from where I presently live and have been living at the Bridges Studios, just, just down what's called Broadway uh, Street here, go down Broadway to Boundary uh, Street, you make a right and Bridges is right there. So. Uh, I remember uh, those days fondly. It's, it's, it's a, a big studio um, lot there with lots of sound stages. And I was listening to some of the other interviews and remembering as another actor spoke about how in those days we auditioned in a trailer. And I had totally forgotten about going into that trailer. Uh, but when I can't remember, was it uh, Eric, Eric Becker maybe Becker. was speaking? Yeah, but maybe he was speaking about that. I'm not sure one of the actors was. And, and I remembered that. And I hadn't thought of that in years and years and years. And uh, it was kind of special going on to the lot there and uh, waiting outside, as he described, and uh, because the waiting room was, was quite small and uh, it held maybe three or four actors. So uh, waiting in, and you'd get moved to the waiting room and then into the inner sanctum, a bigger room. But uh, there's where you do the audition, where I did the audition uh, for... Um, Colonel Makepeace, uh, where I was cast uh, firstly in uh, The Broken Divide. And uh, you mentioned that, uh, Steve, in terms of that audition process. And one thing that seems to be common, I've done a few of these uh, sci-fi documentaries in terms of uh, Battlestar Galactica and other sorts of sci-fi series like this in terms of Vancouver. And what struck me is some of the, a good lot of the actors have... Uh, uh, tried out for previous roles in the series before they actually got the role they were and uh, in terms of Stargate SG-1 had you tried out for different roles going back through the years in, in terms of uh, other sorts of different characters and had you come close or was it always just the one sort of audition for Colonel Makepeace that you went for? Well that's a good question. <laughs> Do I can I recall that? Probably not. Um, yeah. I might have been in there a couple of times before uh, if, if I recall correctly, but uh, not too often. No, Colonel Makepeace was uh, a fairly uh, uh, a role I got fairly quickly, as I recall. And uh, I uh, didn't know what was going to become of it, but obviously from the Broken Divide, the character was um, recurred and it was developed. And I was very, very, very grateful for, for that. And uh, uh, again, as you mentioned earlier, asked earlier, it was great to work with the cast. They were just fantastic. And uh, uh, from top to bottom, from, from, the, from Richard Dean to Amanda to uh, Michael, um, right down the line, it was just a, a top-notch uh, production and organization. And uh, you really felt that when you went on the set. Yeah, and I suppose uh, you mentioned there about a, a recurring role uh, in terms of Colonel sort of make piece. And uh, when you sort of make your appearance and uh, I was speaking to uh, another uh, actor who played a sort of similar role. He played uh, the Gaul Ball. I'm trying to, uh, Cliff Simon is his name actually, played the Gaul uh, Ball in Stargate issue one. And he was a sort of similar sort of a role, a recurring sort of a role. Uh, is that sort of, do you start to get a sense that at the time you're in the episode, do you treat it as one episode uh, and that's it? And I'm going to try and nail this out of the park. And uh, if there's other episodes, so be it. If there's not, at least I'll have that to go onto my resume. At least I can say I'd be proud of my appearance in that. Or do you almost be, get a sense when you appear in an episode that there could be something down the line? Or do you have to sort of hold off in? Do you for, sort of forget about it afterwards? Or do you think to yourself, well, 
who knows, I might get the call here, I might get the call here. Are you, are you a sort of tentative folks going forward? Uh, I had absolutely no idea that uh, Colonel Makepeace would return. Uh, you just focus on uh, playing your part to, to the best of your ability uh, at the time. And uh, there's no, there was no mention of me uh, continuing uh, from, from anyone. And, uh, but when, you, when I did get the call from my agent about appearing in uh, Tokra Part 1, of course, I was very, very, uh, very happy to hear that, and uh, and then took a part two, and then it started to roll, and I thought, okay, you know, you got very excited, thinking that uh, this could be, um, you know, something for the long term or longer term, and uh, but initially, no, I had no idea that it was going to become what it became, and uh, but uh, you know, into the fire was, of course probably the uh, the most epic um, okay. episode that uh, Colonel Makepeace appeared in. And uh, no, I had no idea that it would continue. So mm -hmm. I don't think any actor really does know unless you're, you're cast off the top as a series regular. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Steve, I suppose you appeared in the first season of, uh, you appeared in episode four of the first season of Stargate SG-1. And at the time when you appeared in the episode, did you get a sense that you were on the set of something that was, uh, in terms of sci-fi, that was something that could run for like it did for Stargate for so long? Do you get that sense walking off appeared the episode, crikey, I've appeared in something special here now that is going to really take off or something, or do you treat it as just another gig? And do, you, or do you get the sense when you come home and you sit on the table after working, after appearing that episode, that, yeah, I might have been in something here that could really, uh, in terms of TV series, that could really go big time? Well, I think, yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, by the sheer magnitude and, and the quality of the, of the sets that they had mm. constructed, constructed at uh, Bridge Studios, you got the sense, I got the sense then that it was uh, something that, uh, you know, a lot of money was being put into and a lot of effort and a lot of talent and a lot of creativity. And um, looking back, I had a chance yesterday to look at the Broken Divide again and uh, I hadn't seen it in years and years and years. And, and you know, wow, I thought that episode really had a, a strong filmic quality about it. Mm. Uh, I don't uh, remember the Stargate original movie with Kirk Douglas too clearly, but Broken Divide to me, uh, apart from some of the other episodes really had a strong filmic uh, quality as I mentioned. And I thought, uh, yeah, at the time, wow, with these sets and, and, and just the feeling of uh, uh, just sheer professionalism and, and the investment behind it and, and the people behind it. Uh, yeah, you thought, wow, this is impressive. This this is really impressive. And uh, can you tell us what was your sort of first uh, interactions? Uh, I know it's a long time ago, but your sort of first memories of uh, uh, meeting uh, Richard Dean Anderson on terms of said, obviously a big uh, phenomenon in terms of his time and sort of MacGyver and his character Jack O'Neill is in sci-fi folklore, I suppose, in terms of a real uh, prominent sort of character. And what are your memories of your time on set and those initial memories or those initial encounters with Richard Dean Anderson? Well, they were short and very polite and very professional. Um, of course, he's a busy man. I think he also served as executive producer on the show. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't have an opportunity to uh, intermingle too much with Richard. Of course, he's in, in every scene practically. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, Colonel Makepeace, uh, for, when he was first introduced in the Broken Divide was, um, you know, he, here and there and appearing here and there and being introduced. So, um, yeah, again, uh, you know, the lead actors are, are quite busy, you know, um, in, in, in mostly every scene, as I mentioned, and then between scenes, they're off to uh, hair and makeup uh, or, or costume for a change of costume. So you just kind of, you know, you know, just find your space and just uh, your opportunities to say hello and and uh, get to know them, uh, the, the, the lead actors a little better. And uh, yeah, so uh, as, as the series progressed and I appeared in, 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 in more of them, uh, we became more familiar with each other and uh, uh, yeah. And I suppose uh, Steve, uh, your sort of character sort of became the sort of uh, 
the wall of uh, Stargate in terms yes, of uh, yes. the, uh, the antagonist uh, of uh, Richard sort of Dean uh, sort of Anderson but uh, you mentioned that sort of season three episode uh, Into the Fire and it was where SG3 you were commander of uh, Stargate SG3 and um, the that was the sort of series show where ye sort of cast members really were the predominant sort of for the, the the recording actors were probably the core of that sort of episode because he actually had to rescue uh, the main characters of SG-1. Right, yes. Uh, that was my mission. And uh, in the end, of course, uh, Richard, make peace, nice rescue. You know, it was a little, um, of course, uh, condescending and critical. The fact that at that point, of course, I was uh, I was a prisoner of, a prisoner of Hathor and her her uh, her team there um but i uh, watching that again the other day i thought well at least i i, I advanced the uh, story to that point we mm. you know had a lot of uh, a lot of battles along the way in that episode uh, a lot of gun battles which we were successful at we were on the run to some extent which we were successful at you know uh, staying alive and so i thought that oh colonel make peace and sg3 did at least you know ad advance the story to that point where in the end of course well it's richard's show so he is you know the ultimate hero um so at that point colonel makepeace of course did have to take a uh, a bit of a back seat and uh you know <laughs> it was a little tough uh, for me <laughs> uh steve uh, i spoke already spoke to tom Macbeth uh, in terms of uh this documentary uh, uh, so far and he played as you know harry mayborn and uh, it was part of your sort of uh, finale in terms of Stargate was that sort of, uh, as we said, that sort of uh, mole and uh, coming, forming alliance with um, uh, Tom's uh, character, Harry Mayborn, uh, in terms of the NDI, this sort of rogue sort of agency. Uh, was that sort of a good, exciting role for your recurring character to show that he had uh, all these sort of different elements to his character that he could uh, sort of be look so innocent and so patriotic in one sense, but also have that sort of cunning, uh, deceitful nature on the other hand. Yeah, uh, it was interesting. And looking back on the previous episodes, I did, uh, you know, see moments where uh, Make Peace revealed. Uh, perhaps that other side of him, the, the non-patriotic side, perhaps, or when he said um, uh, to, was it Amanda and Michael about, he's a casualty when, when Richard was um, in, in cryogenic state uh, with, with Hathor, had him, and we were on the run, and I said, well, he's a casualty. And I thought, well, Colonel Makepeace, you know, that's not that patriotic that he would just so but he knew that the, you know the, the, the gate was something they had to get to. If we didn't get to the gate, nobody'd get out of there. So mm. I, you know, looking back, I thought, well, I kind of threw Richard under the bus there a little bit, calling him just a casualty and let's move on, let's leave him. Um, so there were indications of this mole type aspect of um, Colonel Makepeace as I look back on the episodes. When it came to the the last episode, Shades of Grey, where you know I was fully revealed as that. That type of uh, type of guy. I uh, well, I was disappointed to tell you the truth because that was the last episode I did, um, and it, I didn't I didn't know which way they were taking the character. And at the um, reading of the script at Bridges Studio in a boardroom there, as I began to and I hadn't seen the script, but as I began to read it, and you know began to learn that oh I was going to take Richard was retiring and I was taking his place, I got inwardly a little bit excited there for a, for a little while thinking, wow. The lead of SG-1. Rich is retiring, I'm taking his place. Then as I read it, read along, I slowly became very disappointed. And so I am thinking, this is it, I'm done. I, I, I'm arrested, I'm imprisoned on some faraway planet, never to be seen again. And of course, that's that was my last episode. So yeah it was too bad but uh anyways that's the way they wanted to take it and take the character and but there were indications as i look back along the way that yeah you know he wasn't all just uh raw raw and heroic and patriotic and you know he uh he did reveal shades of gray 
<clears throat> and uh, was Make Peace all about the mission? Was that the primary goal of Make Peace? He saw something as sort of black and white. Everything was black and white in terms of his nature. Was that about his sort of uh, character, the way you sort of wanted to portray him, that everything was uh, by the code of book, the military sort of element in his character in terms of that's how he operated, that's how he run uh, in terms of everything was in the line of sort of duty that he was on a constant battlefield in his mind. I think so. Yeah, he was that that kind of guy. Uh, he was a Marine. SG-3 was the, the Marine Corps division of uh, Stargate of SG, SG-1. So, yeah, I think he was a uh, very high drive in the military sense and mission mission driven and uh, pretty intense about that. Yeah, that was that was him. I suppose, uh, Steve, I suppose the final question now before I let you go on is one that I finish off uh, all these sort of interviews and on, uh, in terms of, let's say there was a Stargate um, dictionary, uh, encyclopedia, and they put your character, Colonel Robert Makepeace, into the dictionary, and they left two blank sentences under each, and they asked you, Steve McKay, having portrayed that role as Colonel Robert Makepeace in Stargate, to write those two sentences about uh, make peace. What would you like those two sentences to read? I would say he loved his country. He did everything he could. But in the end, he didn't see the whole picture. Mm. Uh, on that note, uh, Steve McCoy, a pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of playing Colonel Robert Makepeace in Stargate SG-1 from 1997 to 2000, appearing in sort of five episodes. Uh, Steve, an absolute pleasure talking to you today. And uh, please, God, in these troublesome times, uh, may you and your loved ones uh, stay safe Thank and uh, more opportunities for you to come in 2021. Thank you very much. Great talking to you. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you, Steve. Bye.